Hello, everybody. My name is Adam Gordon, entertainer here at IT Pro TV. I'm back with another exciting episode on our How to Use Zoom serial. In this episode, we're going to be focusing on file sharing and screen sharing, how to optimize those meetings and those classes that many of you are probably engaging in and using Zoom to drive. Join me here if you will. We're going to take a look at how to get started. I've got a meeting already spun up. I'm the only participant, so we're not going to worry about whether or not we've got other people and what they're going to see. We're just going to focus on some of the tools and the techniques to really help you create that opportunity to engage with your meeting participants by sharing meaningful content with them and engaging by getting feedback from them. Let's start by sharing meaningful content. We're gonna go ahead and take a look down here at our meeting controls right down here. And I'm gonna bring us in close so we can see that we do have a screen share capability. And I just wanna point out as we get started that we can share by default and by design one person can share at a time, but we do have this ability to allow multiple participants to screen share simultaneously by selecting here. If you wanna find out more about that, we've done a whole episode just on that alone. Definitely check it out in our YouTube playlist so you can see how to do that. We're gonna to stick to single person sharing for this episode because it's only me demonstrating in the meeting. Now, when we wanna go and actually share, what we're gonna do is click share screen. And I'm gonna bring us back out just so we could see this. And we're gonna get a window that lets us share whatever may be open on our computer. Now I've got my own desktop along with a lot of white um, area down here that has web pages, other elements that I may be working on, other programs, Microsoft Teams is running in the background, as well as PowerPoint down here uh, and some other odds and ends. Now we're gonna see how to collaborate using PowerPoint. I've got a PowerPoint slide deck already loaded up. So I'm gonna choose that and I'm gonna share that. So let me highlight that one. We'll just bring us in close so we can see that right down there. And you'll see that when I do that, I'm gonna come over here to the far right. I'm gonna have a little share button that's available to me. And when I click share, about two or three seconds, this window is gonna go away. We're gonna see the share come up and PowerPoint will be presented front and center, even though it's not up on the screen right now. So all that happens automatically. You'll see PowerPoint is brought forward. The focus of the share is now gonna be the program. Now you'll see very clearly that this is a slide deck I've already made up. It's actually one I've used to present at a conference I was speaking at in the last uh, few days on risk management and security related stuff. Uh, and so it's a deck I've already created. But let's say our example is that I want to share this with some colleagues and I want to get some feedback from them on what they think before I present. And Zoom's a great platform to let me do that. Now, if you know anything about PowerPoint, you know that I can present a deck uh, and give it to somebody, let them work on it separately. I can work on it separately, but I also can show them the deck like I'm about to show you. And I can do that in what's called presenter view. So we're going to make this deck into a presentation in PowerPoint because we have full access to all the PowerPoint tools. And all I have to do is come down here and I have to turn on presenter mode so that we get that nice full screen, all of the toolbars and everything go away, the side view of all the slides goes away, and we just see that slide front and center. It's a great way for us to present if we're giving information to people, we want them to see the presentation, but also if I want to ask people for some feedback on this particular presentation, showing them various slides and maybe having a discussion quickly around them, I could do all that right from here. Now, when I put the slide up, if I come back up to my sharing area right here, I've got access to a bunch of different tools. I can pause the share momentarily. I can spin up a new share from here. I can annotate and make some notes on here with the annotation tools. I'll show you that in just a moment. But I've also got this more area right over here where I can actually bring up my ability to see people chatting and doing a variety of things if we wanna get some feedback from them maybe in real time as well. The good news is the chat is not recorded on the screen. It's just available for you to see. So as a result of that, what will happen is I can have the chat up while I'm presenting. Everybody else who's watching this is not gonna see the chat window unless they are actually watching the share, right, on their own screen and they bring their own chat up so they can see it, but it's invisible to people watching. So you don't have to worry about having the chat up and worry about them being able to see it while you're interacting so that people can message you and you can see what's going on. So it's a nice little additional feature that we have. Now I mentioned that we can use the annotation tools if we wanna get some feedback. And when we bring those up, we have this great toolbar. Let's just do all sorts of stuff. We can draw on this, make some notes, 
put a text box in, we can save it, color it, do all sorts of stuff. And then you'll see when we're done, we can come over here and save them or clear the marks depending on what we do. And then we can send these to somebody and give them notes after the meeting or after the presentation to ask them to do something. So let me quickly draw on this and I'll take us back out just so we can see that. And better yet, instead of drawing, let me put a little text box in over here. And let me say that, you know, we think this graphic is too big. Resize question mark, right? Because that's maybe a note you would get when you're vetting a presentation. And so then we can come over here, we can click save, we'll save that. And you'll see that it's screen captured and saved. And then we get a link that says show in folder. And when we do that, what we get here, whoops. What we get there is the ability to go see that screen capture in the folder. And it's basically just a picture that we could then give to somebody if we want to after the meeting or after the presentation, allowing them to be able to interact with those notes and maybe take up whatever we've asked them to do. So it's nice to be able to bring those annotation tools to bear as part of our ability to share one or more pieces of information, in this case through PowerPoint. Now, PowerPoint's a multi-dimensional tool, but let's share something from a different perspective. What about a web page? And specifically, what about a video maybe from a web page? That's often something we also want to share in meetings. So let's go back here. Let's do our share one more time. And this time, let's come down here and we've got our web page loaded up here with our YouTube uh, playlist for all of our Zoom episodes that make up our series. And if you haven't seen it, definitely encourage you to go take a look at all of them. You're about to see them in just a second, but I'm gonna share that out here. Now, you'll notice right down at the bottom here under the share window, and I'm gonna move away from it so you can see it, we have share computer sound. I wanna check that off. It's gonna give us the ability to make sure that sound comes through nice and clearly when we share the video. Remember to unmute the mic and the speakers if you have your volume down as I often do on my machine. Make sure your volume is up so people will hear it. But you'll see that. And there is this other one to optimize screen sharing for video clip. That minimizes all the thumbnails that may show up and really just brings the main screen that you're sharing, the main video front and center, makes it nice and big. You can check that one off if you want to as well. It'll be up to you. All right, so we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna share this out. Let's do that. And you'll see the web page pops up right away. Now, I don't have a video playing, but we could easily play one. So let's see what it looks like when we do play a video through the screen share. I'll choose this first one right here. We're gonna let that play. Now I've got my volume down. Just bring it up a little just so you can hear. So you could see I'm talking and doing that and the video is there, no problem. Let's just mute that so it's not disturbing us, right? And we'll pause that and we can obviously play the video, do what we want, whatever we need to do. And when we're done, simply stop the share. So let's do that. And now we're back to the meeting. Now, another interesting way for you to share that, I'll show you one more trick. We'll go ahead, whoops, let's go back to PowerPoint. One more thing here real quick. I'm gonna go to the next slide. So let me just advance here. Let's say you want to share that YouTube video, but you don't want to go to the trouble of going to the web, the web page and then launching it. You just want to take that video specifically and embed it in your PowerPoint presentation. You could take the URL from the video. You just get the appropriate video where it says share under the video. Click there, get the link. You can embed it in PowerPoint. And then all you have to do right from the desktop chair while you're presenting is click on that link. It's going to bring up your web page for you. Give it just a second and we're gonna be there, and we're gonna be able to play the video. Now, I took the link for that video right from this one under the playlist, so it's not actually launching directly, but you could easily set it up to do that. It's a little extra bonus tip for you if you wanna embed that link and share that video via the PowerPoint presentation. All right, so we've taken a look at several different ways to use applications to do file sharing. What about if we wanna go in and just remind you of the fact that we do have the ability to share whiteboards and do whiteboarding. We've done a whole episode on that and encourage you to take a look at that as well. But also, these are all basic sharing elements. What about this advanced thing over here? This is kind of cool. There's just a couple I'll point out quickly. We have the option to share a portion of our screen, drawing a 
uh, board around it, maybe just to share one element, but not share the whole screen. You should investigate that if that's of value to you. Music or computer sound only. We could share just the sound, but nothing else. And the one that I like a lot, because sometimes you've got more than one camera going on, is we could share content from a second camera. These are all under advanced features and definitely worth your time to experiment with, especially if you're presenting and you have multiple cameras and you want to see different angles during a presentation. You'll have the ability to do that with the advanced features. All right, so we're to kill our shares. And the only other thing I want to point out to you as we get ready to wrap up this episode, we have the ability to do polling, which is a great way to get feedback from participants in real time, as well as the chat feature we've already looked at. Let me show you polls real quick. I'm going to click on this. Now, I've already created a poll, and you'll see it here. Are we having fun? I made it multiple choice, and we can obviously, once we launch it, encourage people to vote. But when you do this the first time, if you don't have a poll created, it opens up a separate window, and it takes you out to the Zoom page where we are going to, I lost my web page. It's here somewhere where we're going to see that we actually can, let's just do it this way, where we actually can, it just opens right up if I do it this way, where we can actually modify or add or remove questions to the poll. So don't be surprised when this pops up, you're going to have to go in there and do this. And then when you're done at the bottom, add your questions, do it as often as you need to save. And then what you're going to see is that the poll is sitting there and it's available for you. And then when you go back to your meeting and you launch your poll at the bottom, the poll is in progress. It's timed. People will get a chance to vote. You, I can't vote because I'm showing you the poll, but they'll be able to vote. And then when that's all done, you say, you know what? I'm done. Got enough feedback. End poll. We'll end the poll. And you get the results. And you can actually relaunch it if you need to do it again, or you can share the results with participants showing them what you did. That's a great way if you're an educator, for instance, be able to quiz your students really quickly, get some feedback, or judge participant engagement while you're in the middle of a meeting. So these are some hopefully helpful tips for you to optimize your meeting and teaching experiences. There are many more, and I encourage you to join us for additional episodes in our Zoom, How Do I Use Zoom YouTube Serial? Because we're always talking about new and innovative ways you could be more productive, but also more secure while you're sharing your information. Until I come back with another episode, happy Zooming. Check out the playlist for more videos on how to use Zoom, and be sure to subscribe to the IT Pro TV channel. I'm Adam Gordon, and thanks for watching.